We try to bring you high quality educational and informational content every single day. Why do you think the price is having such an anemic time? The news story of the hour. Is this the beginning of a massive financial unraveling? We gotta add a little addendum to the show map today. So we start here on the daily. Now we've been looking at the RSI on the Bitcoin's daily chart for the last several days. Well, it's been increasing over the last 50 years since the last The government. It worked. Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here. And in today's video of Coffee and Crypto Live, we are going to be talking about FTX and the contagion that we are watching unfold in the cryptocurrency space. If you guys don't know, there are two contagions going around. Number one, well, I guess three if you count the pandemic, but there are three contagions going around. Number one, there's the pandemic. Number two, <clears throat> FTX went under. They were holding billions and billions of dollars of dollars of client funds and they were invested in all kinds of different projects all kinds of different projects were invested in them and a lot of those projects that were invested in ftx held capital on ftx or were invested in by ftx now no longer have certain funding or funds that they did have before ftx went under that is called contagion we saw the exact same thing happen with luna when luna went under it wasn't just luna that went under we also saw three arrows capital celsius voyager digital all of these different companies uh go under you saw a massive amount of shorting activity going on on the bitcoin and crypto market which dropped the entire price of the entire cryptocurrency industry causing a ton of different uh individual investors to go insolvent illiquid and have to even file for bankruptcy there were a lot of different people that got hurt very badly from luna Luna was not the only thing that went down when Luna went down. A lot of other projects went down alongside Luna because they were heavily invested in Luna or the Luna Foundation had invested in them. Now we're seeing the exact same thing happen with FTX. So that's the second kind of contagion. The third kind of contagion is this dang head cold. I just cannot shake it. I don't know what's going on. I mean, it, it clearly just caused me to not have the, mi the right microphone set up. Obviously, it was the cold's fault. It totally wasn't my fault. It'd never be my fault. No, I'm kidding. I'm sorry about that. Messed up the intro. That's okay. We're here though, guys. Today, we are going to be talking about FTX and the contagion that it has now started. Many people are concerned about the fate of Solana, about the future of Kronos and Crypto.com, its parent company. People are uh, coming out in droves to buy things like Trezor and Ledger wallets, and uh, the Trust wallet is getting a lot of new uh, interest. Even CZ tweeting about it yesterday. So there is a lot to break down in this stream because make no mistake, FTX CEO Sam Bankman-Fried coming out at 11.03 a.m. a week ago today saying that FTX pretty much had gone under was the beginning, not the end. I mean, it was the end for FTX, but it was just the beginning of a new era, a new season, if you will, of collapse in cryptocurrency. Also, don't forget, and we're going to talk about this too, the miners are going to get hurt pretty badly by this because Argo Blockchain Core Scientific, those two miners that we talked about that were on the brink of bankruptcy and were moving towards bankruptcy, well, now Bitcoin's trading at 25% less. What do you think is happening to their profitability? The miners are going to get wrecked by this also, considering where Bitcoin and cryptocurrency are trading at. So that's what we're going to talk about today. If you do enjoy today's video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that post notification bell so that you will be updated every single time a new live stream goes up. This is Coffee and Crypto, where we like to bring you the latest in Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and technical and on-chain and fundamental analysis so that you can have a solid understanding of where Bitcoin is, where Bitcoin is going, so that you can be part of the hashtag Bedrock Squad. Let's see you guys represent in chat and reach out for that financial sovereignty, that control over your finances and your financial systems that you so long for being a denizen of the cryptocurrency industry. You know, one thing about having a cold that I've always noticed about myself is it does make me sound like a movie announcer. Coming up on December 6th, we're going to, you know, maybe if I ever... Uh, fail at YouTube, then, uh, which I have plenty of times. Maybe if, if something ever happens to YouTube, I could go and uh, work at the box office. Anyway, let's go ahead and see who was first. Oh, it's not fair because 
I was first. So shout out to myself, I guess. But no, actually, Crypto Smitty was first. Crypto Smitty coming in and saying second. Grand Murphy Incorporated, Incorporated said good morning, Jeb. Sorry about the no audio thing. Uh, let me check chat. I should be fine now. Yeah, all good now. Sorry about that. Luckily, I was monitoring the audio, so I didn't do the whole intro for three or four minutes and then not realize it because... Yeah, I, I got lucky is what it was. Justin Eubank said good morning. Win Peoples uh, said good morning. Tyler Main said, word up, Crypto Crew. What's up, my friend? Uh, we had 1,800 people watching yesterday. So thank you very much to everybody who tuned in. If this is your first or your second or your third live stream here on the Crypto Jeb YouTube channel, like I said, I want to help you become financially sovereign. To me, that means helping you have sovereignty, authority, control, and power over your finances and your financial systems and institu institutions and currencies in such a way that they don't control you, but you control them. That is the very most core of what I want for you is for you to have financial sovereignty in your life like myself and my family do because we've implemented a lot of the different things that we've taught you guys here on the channel for five years tomorrow. By the way, tomorrow's the fifth birthday of this channel. Super excited about that. Justin Eubank said, hashtag bedrock, hashtag Fensov. Good deal. And shout out to Queen for carrying on the idea of bedrock. I like that. We're going to make that a hashtag. Grand Rippy Incorporated said, I hate the winter and hate the snow unless there's something fun to do in it, but it does get me out of the field and able to sit at a desk. Fair enough. Let's see. Crypto Mini Bike JoJo. Alex uh, Nyibo said, uh, Nyibo? Nyibo? I don't know. Said, can you turn up your volume? I'll turn it up a little bit. I just didn't want to be peaking. So, guys, tell me if that's a little bit better right there. Uh, Greg Roofing said, hey, Jeb, wanted to share while you have a chance to read these messages. I'm pretty sure on your YouTube live screen that you set up to go streaming with, you can see Super Chats that have disappeared. There probably is a place up here where I can do that, actually. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's insert ad. So <laughs> I think I just put an ad in right here. So sorry if you're seeing an ad right now. I don't, I did not mean to press that button. Everybody's over here saying lip, lip reading time. Yeah, sorry about that. Win people's got a ton of people saying that in chat. Adam Rourke. Let's just go ahead and run through all these and we're going to jump on to uh, coin market cap. Can't shake my cold for over a month. Dude, sounds like you're going through winter over there. I'm so sorry. Crypto mini buy, Justin Eubanks, uh, Shannon Sharp, Matt C, everybody in chat. Guys, we've got to start off here with a certain tweet that is just absolutely hilarious. I probably won't be able to show the whole thing, so you'll need to go and watch it, but it's right here. Let me see if I can get a uh, desktop audio set up. Yes, I can. So I'm just going to go ahead and play this. So just take a look at this. This is so funny. Today, smoking Shout out is to Naive save lives. Here. They made this. Tell me if you guys can't hear that. Does anyone smell anything smoky? Did you bring your jerky in again? <clears throat> oh my god! Uh, oh my god! Fire! Oh, fire! Oh my goodness! Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay Calm. Wait, 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 wait. Calm down. What does warm mean? Oh my gosh, I'm not a Okay, okay. Oh, Have you ever seen a burn victim? Okay, procedure, procedure. Exit options. Where do we go, folks? What, use a whoop to cover the mouth. Remember your exit points. Exit points, people. What's next? Um, Stay alive, I'm getting help. You're too heavy! I only weigh 82 pounds! Save <laughs> <Stay> Bandit! <laughs> what is that? What is that? The fire is shooting at us! Shout out to Naive Meme. That's N-A-I-I-V-E Meme. It's spelled like meme over on Twitter. I DM'd him and I told him that was so funny. That video, I just, we got to start with a laugh, guys, because crypto kind of sucks right now. I mean, the prices are great, but golly, it sucks, right? The cat dropping through the ceiling. Oh, man. The cat dropping through the ceiling and saying FTT negative 95%. That's too funny, guys. That is hilarious. I really, I mean, I feel bad for everybody who lost money in FTT, but 
Golly, we got to be able to laugh at ourselves sometimes, huh? Anyway, let's go ahead and keep on moving here. Let's jump on over to Coin Market Cap, where we are going to talk about none other than the price of Bitcoin and crypto. Bitcoin currently sitting at sixteen thousand nine hundred nine dollars. Ethereum sitting at twelve sixty six. Tether sitting at a dollar. Remember what I said yesterday, and please don't forget it, and make sure you shout it from the rooftops. We need to demand proof of reserves from Tether, Binance, Coinbase, all Crypto.com as well, because they're uh, getting some heat right now for misappropriating and missending $400 million in user funds. How do you do that? Anyway, we'll talk about that in a second. But nevertheless, Bitcoin currently sitting at uh, just under $17,000. It's sitting here in this kind of limbo territory. We're going to talk about Bitcoin a little bit today. But we have a lot of news to cover. Um, and the, the thing I want you to know is that Bitcoin is sitting in this descending triangle pattern right now with an uptrending level of support right here. This is a, uh, I said descending triangle pattern, excuse me. It is a symmetrical triangle pattern that is bearish. So it's a bear pennant is what it is. Its price target is sitting down here <clears throat> at 12000 $400, which is below our, our current price target for Bitcoin, around $13,800. It would make a lot of sense if Bitcoin did have one more leg down here. A lot of times what you see happen in a drop like this is that you will see a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 movement to the downside. So you can say 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, something like this in Elliott Wave Theory. But you can also just generally have a drop, a bounce, and then a drop, which it technically doesn't line up with Elliott Wave Theory. But the point is that you normally will see a movement like this or a movement like this moving to the downside. I would be very surprised if this movement to the downside is done. We're hovering here on made-up support around $15,500. If you look at the support region right here that we're bouncing off of, you can look back in the history of Bitcoin and crypto, there's almost nothing to substantiate where we're finding support. Normally, Bitcoin and crypto, unless it's in blue sky breakout going to new all-time highs, is going to go to some kind of technically predicted level of support or resistance. In this case, support because we're moving to the downside. But there's nothing back here. Even looking on BPVR, you will be able to see when I bring this up. There's nothing here. This is it. Looking back on the last five years of crypto, there is virtually nothing in this region whatsoever. The first major support that you look at is down here at $12,400 because pretty much all of the trading was taking place below that level. The fact of the matter is Bitcoin is making it up as it goes, almost like... <laughs> uh, let's see, where is he? Almost like this dude over on Twitter. Uh, well, not CZ, but uh, here we go. This guy, Sam Bankman-Fried, he's making it up as he goes, just like Sam Bankman-Fried. That's how we do it in crypto. We make it up as we go. No, that's that's how you lose all your money in crypto is by making it up as you go. You need to have a plan. Nevertheless, Bitcoin, if it were to fall down to a uh, more sensible level of support, it would probably fall down to uh, at least $13,000, but potentially as low as $12,000, which is where we really start to see a lot of VPVR support come into play. And the reason why I think that's going to happen is because, mark my words, you can quote me on this, I am almost certain that this will not be the last major bankruptcy that you see in crypto in the next three months. I'm not saying that we're going to see another bankruptcy necessarily to the size and scale of FTX because there aren't a lot of players in crypto bigger than FTX. I mean, you're talking about a very, very, very small club of people. The size of FTX companies, very, uh, the size of FTX or larger, you're talking about Coinbase, Binance, and that's about it. There's not a whole lot of other players that are specifically cryptocurrency companies that would go under like this larger than FTX. So I'm not saying you're going to see a bankruptcy larger than FTX, but you're going to see another major bankruptcy worth 500 to a billion dollars. I can almost guarantee it. You've seen something similar happen in the cryptocurrency space. Ever since FTX went under, we saw 200 billion, I almost said million, billion dollars. We're talking about a Jeff Bezos here or an Elon Musk here. Vanish, gone, disappear. And where was Gary Gensler? <laughs> I harped on him yesterday. Don't get me started on Gary Gensler right now. We're not going to go there right now because I want to keep my uh, blood pressure down. You know, I, I it, it, ups it upsets me when somebody is so adamant about regulating a space that he wants to go and file lawsuits against projects that haven't done anything and then let something like FTX and Luna go right under his nose in the span of six months. I don't know. I guess losing four hundred billion dollars in a new in in a new industry doesn't concern Gary Gensler. Who knows? Anyway. I'll lay off for a little bit. The main thing I want you to understand is that this is not going to be the end of this. We have only seen the very beginning of what will come to pass as a result of FTX going under. One of the things that I want you guys to keep in mind is a company known as uh, Crypto.com. And I have their, uh, an article right up over here. Crypto.com CEO downplays FTX contagion fears, says he'll prove naysayers wrong as withdrawals rise. <clears throat> Crypto.com CEO Chris uh, Marzazelic, Marzalek, I think is how you pronounce his name. I've never known how to pronounce his name. Said his firm had a tremendously strong balance sheet and wasn't engaged in the kind of practices that causes caused FTX's collapse. 
Certainly hope not, because otherwise the other stadium that you guys own will have to get renamed anyway. But you can see we never engage as a company in, ir in any irresponsible lending practices. We never took any third-party risks, he said in an AMA on YouTube. It comes after the re revelation Sunday that Crypto.com mistakenly sent $400 million worth of Ether to Gate.io, another, another crypto exchange, in October. Let me just ask you a question. Didn't you learn? You know how people are like, didn't you learn in kindergarten not to hit people? You know how people say that? Hey, Crypto.com, didn't you learn in the first three months of being in crypto from watching like five YouTube videos that you sent a test transaction? Because if the wallet that you sent that to had one missing uh, character, you would have lost $400 million in user funds. So tell me, Crypto.com and CEO, how in the world do you miss send $400 million? And by the way, what are you doing sending it all in one transaction? And by the way, how did it get sent? What? This is, what? I understand mistakes, but $400 million? Golly, that's horrible. Anybody on crypto.com right now has really got to be quaking in their boots. Well, what happens if they do that again, but they miss a Q? What if they put a lowercase Q instead of a capital Q and the whole thing disappears? It, I understand that you can lose money moving cryptocurrency and you got to be careful. That's not the kind of mistake that you want to make. So he goes on in the article to say that they've, uh, that they've, gone on and strengthened uh, strengthened their uh, systems and everything. Let's see, where did he say it here? He said that they've gone on and strengthened their systems and made it so that that error couldn't happen again. But the fact of the matter is, it did happen and did get sent to the wrong place. Now, they got it back. Everything is fine over Crypto.com, allegedly. But the same concern I have about uh, Binance has not been so much assuaged for me about Kronos. If you guys don't know, CRO is the native token for Crypto.com. In fact, it used to be called Crypto.com before they rebranded it because of the concern that a lot of people had. Now, there's other reasons why they rebranded it, but I think the main reason they rebranded it was because there was a concern that it was affiliated so closely with Crypto.com. Let me ask you a question. Again, I know I keep harping on this, but it's so important because Gary Gensler, whether or not he premeditated allowing for FTX to go under or not, I'm not making that allegation because I don't know, but it is a question and I'm allowed to ask questions. Whether or not he did that intentionally, intentionally stepped back and allowed FTX to go under and turned a blind eye to it so that he could gain more of a reason to go after the cryptocurrency industry with a fervor or not, whether or not he did that. The fact of the matter is he has a much stronger case right now to go after crypto than he did eight months ago before Luna and FTX went under. We're talking $400 billion in market capitalization gone after both of those major crashes. And they both should have been prevented. Neither one of them should have happened. When you see an exchange or a company like Crypto.com or Binance or FTX or any other company that has its own token, I'm talking about pretty much every single one of the ICO projects as well. How do you make an argument against Gary Gensler Securities and Exchange Commission that that cryptocurrency does not fail the Howey test? If you don't know what the Howey test is, it is a test that was established in a Supreme Court case back in the 30s, I think it was, uh, Howie being one of the people involved in the case. And it basically is the definition uh, based on legal precedent that lawmaker, the regulators use to determine whether or not a certain asset is a security and therefore falls under the Securities and Exchange Commission's purview. One of the major things that the Howie test talks about, in fact, you know what, I'll just bring up the Howie test. Let me see if I can bring up something simple on the Howie test. <clears throat> Let me just bring this up because, like I said, we're talking about contagion here. Here, uh, uh, Dentos has a good one. Investopedia has a great definition on this. Let me pull this up really quickly. Here we go. <clears throat> it's a four-part test. Very simple. In doing so, the, uh, you can see here, it has to do with the uh, SEC versus WJ, Howie, uh, Co., et cetera, et cetera. I believe this case happened in the 30s. It's been around for, it happened a very, uh, Securities Act of 1933 and Securities Exchange Act of 1930. Yeah, okay. So here's the Howey test. An investment contract, otherwise a security, is an investment of money in a common enterprise with the expectation of profit to be derived from the efforts of others. So if you were investing money in FTT or in Kronos, and it's a common enterprise, meaning that there is a company involved that you're investing in <clears throat> this is where it gets a little shady and we'll come back to that in a second with the expectation of profit that's obviously there for every single cryptocurrency but that doesn't mean every crypto is a security because you got to meet all four points and also it's a very vague test that you have to use a lot of precedence to try and define because a security is a made-up concept to be derived from the efforts of others 
So pretty much a security is a, a stock, a certificate of ownership. Any kind of cer certificate of ownership or a stock is a security because you invest money in it and you're investing money in the enterprise and you're expecting to make profit off of it. And that profit is being derived by the efforts of others. So if you're investing in a company, then it is an investment contract. A security is a type of, imbe of investment contract. So that's what, this, what the Howey test does. So let's run through this with FTX. You're investing money with an expectation of profit to be derived from the efforts of others. The question, and this is what X XRP is battling in court right now, is in a common enterprise, <clears throat> when you invest in FTT, are you actually investing in the business of FTX? That's the question that you have to come up with because the loophole that a lot of cryptocurrencies use is that, well, no, you're not investing in the company. You're investing in the project and the project has utility. Yeah. But why did you make the project in the first place? Why did you make FTT? Why did you make Binance Smart Chain? Why did you make Kronos? Crypto.com token, whatever you want to call it. You made it. Yes, trying to provide utility. Nobody's going to deny that there's some utility, especially on Binance Smart Chain. But when those projects were launched, they raised capital for the company. It is a very, very, very shady spot because it meets three criteria. But a lot of things meet those three criteria. It's when you pull in that concept of a common enterprise that you have to start asking the question by investing in FTT and FTX owns FTT, a lot of it, and created it. And you look at something like uh, Binance Smart Chain, you look at something like Kronos, are you not also investing in the company? Because the argument would be that when you invest in a stock, the stock has absolutely no value whatsoever. It just is a fractionalized piece of ownership of the company. You could go on a long time about that. It is very possible that regulators would not consider cryptocurrency securities because they ought to be under their own regulatory category, which I would agree with, and that's the way it should be. But it is very easy for Gary Gensler to make a case in front of a court, in front of the Supreme Court, that FTT, Binance, Kronos, and a lot of these other cryptocurrencies do fall under the Howey test, especially if the token has very little to no value, and you can argue in court that the overwhelming majority of the value of that cryptocurrency comes from it having the name from the exchange, and the exchange is profiting in a major way from the appreciation of that asset, which FTX was. Were these cryptocurrencies an unlicensed security? I don't know, but one of the things we have to keep in mind when we're talking about contagion is not just that there's going to be a ton of different companies that are going to go under because they don't now have enough money on their balance sheet to stay solvent and will go bankrupt. I will, I'm very confident when I say that you will see another major miner go under or lose a funding round or go bankrupt or go illiquid within the next three months following this because of the price action of Bitcoin. If it stays down here for long enough, if it jumps back up to 22, 23, then maybe not. I'm very confident also that some more lending platforms very well may go under because a lot of these lending platforms are competing on the APY. They're trying to get up to that 20% APY. They want to get up to 22, 25% APY and to beat their competition in the short term, playing the short game. Now you got to play the long game if you want to win, but to play the short game, you get greedy, stupid actors that are trying to manage their companies and beat their competition with higher APY and going into more risky investments. Many of them were probably holding FTT. A lot, and now, I, d I don't know every single company in the industry. I don't know every single company's balance sheet. It's extremely difficult to predict. We could not have predicted that this would have happened to FTX. There were a lot of people that had concerns. I had concerns. That's why I never used them. But because Sam bankman fried frankly, creeps me out. And I'm going to show you why on Twitter here in a second for a couple of reasons. But <clears throat> uh, the fact of the matter is there was not... Uh, there, you don't know what companies had investment in FTT. You don't know what companies had investment in Solana. You don't know what companies had uh, investment and in, in, in part of their reserves in a lot of these different cryptocurrencies that have gotten absolutely decimated. So one, you're going to see a lot of companies go under. Two, you're going to, and hopefully, and I actually want this to happen, but it needs to happen in the right way. You're going to see a lot more regulatory scrutiny coming in from the likes of uh, Gary Gensler and the likes of, of uh, the CFTC, the Department of Justice, and many of the other regulatory governing bodies, the IRS in the United States, as a result of the fact that you could make an argument in court that FTT, Binance, Kronos, and a lot of those are securities. Maybe they're not. Maybe they are. I'm not saying which way. That's for a court to decide. I'm not a securities lawyer, but there is a case. And that's the scary thing, is that there is a case. And if you see the SEC come after Binance Smart Chain, which right now, for example... Uh, well, let's start with Kronos. After Kronos, it's worth $2 billion. You see them come after Binance Smart Chain, uh, Binance Token, excuse me, Binance has the Binance Smart Chain. That's $44.5 billion. I'm not saying the cryptocurrency would, would cease to exist. It'd probably continue going on, but you'd probably see its price drop 80% in three weeks. You see $30 billion disappear because the SEC files a lawsuit. 
That's what. That's why XRP hasn't gone back to all-time high. XRP is a half-decent blockchain. I don't think it's the best one out there. I don't think it's the best in its own field, but it is worth more than what it's trading at right now. I, it probably would be at a dollar or more if not for the SEC lawsuit. You see a lot of value disappear because a lot of value disappeared from all of these companies going under, hurting investors, and then the regulation comes in in a big way. So two big ways that contagion is going to happen. Number one, you have companies that were invested in the likes of FTT. <clears throat> they were literally invested in the ownership of FTX, or FTX was invested in them and was providing liquidity and value to them. We're going to talk about a couple of different examples of that recently. And two, you're going to see so much regulatory scrutiny over the next two to three years from from the Securities and Exchange Commission under Gary Gensler saying, ha ha, we got you. It was a security. We should have been regulating it all along. Where were you six months ago, dude? Before people lost $30 billion. I've never been, I have told you guys for years, this market needs to have light regulation. It doesn't need to have a lot of regulation, but it does need to have some. Things like what happened to FTX should never have happened. And I think the government overreaches and is five times larger than it should be. But the government does have one place. It has a few places. But one of the places that it does have is to protect users from bad actors by making them to be transparent. And making them to have accountability. That is a big part of their job. The government's job. And they failed big time. And Gary ought to... And you know what? The SEC is invest investigating FTX. Good. Somebody ought to investigate Gary Gensler and the SEC for why they weren't going after this. Anyway... <laughs> It just, it, 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 it heavily disappoints me on behalf of my viewers and our community and this industry when people have lost their life savings on FTX because they should have been able to trust the exchange. By the way, the exchange that everybody's talking about had a CEO that was lobbying for regulation in the United States. He was going to Capitol Hill trying to get regulation. He was talking to Gary. That's the story that a lot of people are pushing is that he was trying to get regulation. He po Sam bankman fried he posted this whole thing <clears throat> about how he wanted regulation in the industry self-regulation where was it dude anyway so again two big ways contagion is going to happen number one falling asset prices number two increased regulatory scrutiny i'm going to go ahead and read some chat read some super chats we got a few of those and then we're going to keep moving on here really appreciate all of you guys tuning in we've got about a thousand uh, 1050 people watching make sure to smash that like button let's get up to 500 likes here before we wrap out the stream Oh, goodness. I saw a super chat earlier, and I think I lost it. I've really got to come up with a better system for that. Uh, Grand Roofing Incorporated, you said... Let me see if I can... Oh, I found it. Aha, it is still here. Taco Knight. That's a great name. Donate five bucks. Said, if Bitcoin goes sub 14 k where do you think Cardano will be? Cardano will probably be at a quarter. I will show you on the chart really quickly, actually. Because I'm a big, big fan of Cardano. I've been loading up some on this dip, and I think it's a sleeper. I don't think people are giving it enough credit right now, and that's okay, because that means... My friend Cardano is dropping quite a bit, and that gives me an opportunity to scoop it back up at low levels. Looking back at the total history of, of uh, ADA, let's go ahead and remove all these drawings here. Looking back at the total history of Cardano, here you will be able to see that it actually does have a few support levels at like 20 cents, and it also has one right here at about 23 cents. It's not much to go off of, because if you look at the long-term history, you actually have to start getting down below the 20 cent range to see a drop right here. But if you do see Bitcoin drop down into that territory of 14K, sub 14K, you will probably see Cardano drop down to 20 cents. Would not be surprised at all if that occurred. And I would be buying so much of it. I just bought Cardano. Uh, I will show you guys here. Uh, I bought Cardano at 37 cents and at 33 cents. So those are my two entries right now. Very pleased with them. Very excited by them. And uh, can't wait to jump into some more ADA if it does go down to those prices. Let's read chat here for a little bit. Guys, tell me if there's anything you would like me to cover. And uh, we will do it. Queen said, baseless allegations, hashtag CRO fan. Yeah, I don't have anything against CRO. Um, I want to be, let me, I should probably say this. I don't have anything against CZ, the founder of Crypto.com. I don't have anything against Crypto.com. I don't have anything against Binance. I don't have anything against Binance Smart Chain. I don't have anything against Kronos. That being said, it would be irresponsible of me to not share a concern that I have with you guys when if you're invested in one of those two cryptocurrencies or if somehow you're invested in the companies, even though I think they're both private uh, and you're like a VC in them or something, I, I would be irresponsible not to share with you something to, that you should be thinking about, which it is a concern that they have that they have that. Uh, it was whitelisted. Yes, I know it was whitelisted, so that's that's a good point. They have the, they have a whole list of wallets that they send it to. But then again, but so the, that actually just makes it even worse. As far as copying and pasting it, yeah, that can make mistakes. I understand that's not how they do it. How do you send it to the wrong wallet? How? I just <laughs> You can get fired up, Jeb. Go full pit boy. Yeah, Ben. I'll tell you what, Ben was vindicated on a lot of things. People were talking trash about him 
calling out Sam Bankman Freed. And I don't know if every allegation he made was true or not. Sam Bankman Freed was not to be trusted. And he was one of the people screaming about it. I was screaming about it. Not about Sam Bankman Freed, but I was telling you guys for a year about these exchange tokens and exchanges investing in their own current, in their own crypto, in their own uh, exchange tokens. If they're doing that, they're treating their exchange token like a stock. Companies invest in their own stock and do stock buybacks. It's a security. Just be careful. Jeb is a long Cardano believer. Are you staking it on the blockchain with Daedalus Wallet? I actually haven't yet because I just rebought into it. Uh, Cardano, and I need to do that. Thank you for reminding me that, because I have quite a lot of of it. By the way, guys, if you are here for Coffee and Crypto Live, you've got to make sure that you have your coffee mug and that you are drinking some coffee. So on three, one, two, three, boom, cheers. Mm. Last sip's always good because the sugar falls to the bottom. On the one month anniversary of my wife and I getting married, I got matching coffee mugs like this. That's what it looks like right right, right there. You got the heart. Her says girlfriend, fiance, wife. Established 2022. And then right there it says, never happier than March 5th, 2022. That was the day we got married. So hers on the back of it says, your husband is de desperately in love with you. So she uh, she made me coffee this morning and brought that for me and put it in this mug. So that was, that was very sweet of her. All right, we're going to read chat here for a second. And then we're going to jump back on into it. Give me one second. By the way, if you notice, I am still at the house. Because like I said, it's not just crypto that's got some contagion problems. It's me as well. I am still sick with strep throat. Luckily, talking this much and having some coffee cleared out my throat. But I'm feeling pretty rough right now. And if you've seen me mix my words a little bit more than I normally do, that would be why. I did bring home some lighting gear yesterday, so I don't hopefully look like an orange like I did yesterday or a banana or whatever. I look pretty weird with the lighting. Uh, I have some of our studio lighting in here now. So, sorry Malachi, I'm taking over his room. <laughs> so, anyway. Like I said, let's read chat here for a couple more minutes. Just one or two more minutes. Just stick with me here, and then we're going to go ahead and jump back on into it. Jeb obviously doesn't consider Cardano to be a scam he's invested in. Heck no, I don't consider it to be a scam. I think Cardano is an incredible project. And look, guys, anything could be a sleeper scam, I guess, but I really don't think it is. I am, I mean, I've interviewed the founder. There's an interview with Charles Hoskins on this channel. It's got 60 or 70,000 views. Go back and watch it. Um... Let's see. Accountable to who? Who gets themselves appointed crypto president of crypto? It's not that's the that's the thing. You don't have a president of an industry. You have a regulatory governing body, and that could be something that was made for that is built for cryptocurrency. We could self-regulate, but the government probably will step in and do it for us, whether we like it or not. Do I think Cardano is a scam? No, I definitely don't think Cardano is a scam. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump back onto it. But before we do, I just first want to bring a word from one of our sponsors known as none other than Mexi. If you guys are not familiar with Mexi, they are a cryptocurrency exchange over here with all kinds of different features and functionalities. And one of the things that I really like about them is the ability to come over here and do things like staking. You can actually do Ethereum 2.0 staking right over here. You can also come over here and do your trading. You can buy cryptocurrency with a debit card, a bank transfer, or even peer-to-peer -peer trading over here. And you can also find all kinds of different features and functionalities like trade mining. This is a pretty cool feature right here, MX Burn. There's a lot going on over here. You've even got staking over here. So make sure you check out MexC with a link in the description box down below. Thank you to Mexi for sponsoring the channel. Let's go ahead and continue on here with some Bitcoin. We're going to do some TA, guys, because we have not done TA here in a little bit on Bitcoin. And it's very important that we do. If you guys don't know, I'm a technical analyst by trade. I've been in the market for over five years, and I've been working with the, with the Bitcoin chart pretty much every single day ever since. I can show you the first day that I got into cryptocurrency. It was right back over here on July 31st, 2017. I'll go ahead and draw a vertical line right here. Boom. This is the day that I got into cryptocurrency, that right red line. I'm going to leave the, I'm going to go ahead and just remove that. This line, these other red lines have a meaning, so I'm not going to get rid of them. But this line right here is how long I've been in crypto. Let's see, how long have I been in crypto for? Uh, roughly 2,000 days. So <laughs> not bad. Been here for a while. I've watched a lot of stuff on play, uh, unfold on the market. I've been a technical analyst since the first day I got into the space. Been learning ever since. That journey never stops. And today we're going to take a look at some charts because it's very important that we understand what's going on with Bitcoin. So just a couple rehash, a couple things to rehash. First and foremost, you can see my purchase prices here. Got into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency uh, recently right here. Bought into Bitcoin at 18369 And then we also bought in down here on the dip 
at 16182 got a couple of really solid purchases and i could and i would be lying if i told you that i wanted bitcoin to stay at these levels and not go lower at this point i do want bitcoin to go lower because i have only been able to deploy half of all the money we want to deploy into bitcoin and crypto so i'm really looking forward to bitcoin dropping down to 14k so i may be a little bit biased in the bearish direction i really don't think i am though i want to be as unbiased as i possibly can be i've learned how to keep my emotions on the sidelines so that you guys are getting the most accurate information that is from as much of a logical standpoint as possible. So let's go ahead and dig into these charts. First things first, I want to go ahead and give you a uh, look at something called Chart Prime. If you guys are not familiar with Chart Prime, it is a uh, paid technical indicator here and it has this thing called Chart Prime Oscillator right down here. You can see that it has oversold signals right here and you can see that the market got very deep into oversold territory. We, see, we saw a red dot right here indicating we were getting close to the bottom. Then the oversold, you can see that OS. If you're on 1080p, you'll probably see OS right there. That OS stands for oversold, indicating we got towards the bottom, and then we bounce back up. You can see this oscillator is moving back into the band, but it's still staying right down here around the bottom, which indicates to us that Bitcoin is still, even though it's recovering a little bit, in pretty bearish territory. We can also see over here uh, with uh, Market Oracle right here that <clears throat> we have a couple different things we want to look at. First and foremost, it gave us a potential reversal to the upside right here, which is pretty encouraging over there. And then you can also see over here the correlations. We have mostly a positive correlation with Dixie right now, which is quite interesting. You can see Dixie is dropping while Bitcoin's dropping. I'm going to get to that in a second. But we also have a strong negative correlation to stocks, uh, which you will be able to see when it comes up down here. This is the market oracle part of of uh, chart prime you can see most a uh, moderate negative correlation to the s p 500 nasdaq and dji because if you go over there they're rallying so that's very interesting and what that tells us is that we need to pay attention because why is bitcoin having a, a positive correlation with dixie that's what chart prime is at that's the question chart prime is really asking us why does bitcoin have a positive correlation with the dixie well the Dixie's dropping as a result of CPI data coming out 7.7, .7, beating 8.2 last month, indicating that we're going to see a 50 basis point rate hike on December 14th meeting coming up here in about uh, a month minus a day. When that occurs, then you're going to see a drop on the Dixie as other currencies start to gain strength against the dollar. The Dixie will start going down, and then Bitcoin being typically inversely correlated with the Dixie should go into a rally. This is the setup that we've been talking about here. Bitcoin has had a major drop breaking its trend because typically, and I'll show you this, Typically, Bitcoin has been following the Dixie inversely. And there's actually a really cool way that you can do this. You can go to, oh gosh, I've only done this once. So I'm going to have to remember how to do this. But there's a way, and tell me in chat if you remember this. There's a way that you can flip. I think it's Control I, invert. What is the button? How to, how to invert a chart on TradingView. I'm going to have to look it up, guys. That's how you do it. It's Alt I. That's what it is. Let's go ahead and pull up Alt I here. Invert Bitcoin and then compare it to the Dixie uh in all in the new price scale and you'll be able to see bitcoin and the dixie follow each other very closely inversely so you can see this is bitcoin upside down for the last five years and whenever the dixie is going up bitcoin is going down whenever 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 these two charts are these two charts move together again bitcoin is upside down right here the dixie is not so whenever the dixie is going up bitcoin's going down you can see that taking place over here it looks like bitcoin's going up but that's just because it's upside down if we invert it like this and bring it back to where it normally is that's why i had the blx chart up over here with this with these vertical lines here you can see whenever the dixie is very low bitcoin's very high whenever the dixie is very high bitcoin's very low whenever the dixie's trading sideways bitcoin is normally struggling as well dixie's been just taking off ever since we hit all-time high up here in november of last year and especially since the fed started pumping rates Dixie's been taking off towards new all-time highs. If you look on the Dixie, then you'll also see here that it's at its highest level since 2002. So there's a huge negative correlation between these two. So that begs the question, down here on the daily chart, why are they positively correlated? Why is Bitcoin moving down when the Dixie is moving down? Well, Bitcoin is moving down this much because of a massive fundamental dump causing it to start to ignore the Dixie and move down for its own inter-industry reasons. That's what we're seeing take place and transpire right now. But the good news for any investor is that when we saw uh, the effect, uh, when we saw the CPI data come out just a couple of months ago, sorry, not a couple months ago, a couple days ago, uh, on the 10th, it was five days ago, when we saw that data come out 7.7, .7, that pretty much guaranteed a 50 basis point rate hike on the effect of federal funds rate, meaning a Fed pivot is extremely likely to start on December 14th, if not then February the 2nd at their next meeting, basically guaranteed, more or less allowing people to bake into the price that we're going to see a Fed pivot. That's wonderful because if the Fed, <clears throat> if you see inflation come down, 
the Fed is going to stop hiking rates as strongly, which means the Dixie is going to come down, which means that Bitcoin can rally. We got to unravel all those layers. After the Dixie starts coming down, Bitcoin now has room to run. It has a higher potential ceiling. It's able to move to the upside in a much stronger fashion. The problem is it's being held down right now by FUD inside the industry. But, and I've talked about this a couple times recently, but I want to bring it up again. Bitcoin has made has done a very interesting thing recently. And that is that it didn't drop straight to $14,000 like a lot of people predicted that it would. Like, a, like it definitely could have. It definitely could have dropped all the way down to $13,800, and it didn't. It stopped here in midair, indicating that something other than technical support is holding it up. The mere fact that it didn't drop straight to $14,000 is a point in favor of the bulls, just so you know. And that could be coming from the fact that the Dixie is weak. That could be coming from the fact that the Dixie is jumping off a cliff ever since we saw that CPI data come out. Remember, CPI data came out November 10th. On that same day, Dixie broke bearish out of his trading range at around 109 points, all the way down to 106 where it is right now. It's been dropping like a rock because everybody knows, um, and all of the all of the uh, uh, the forex traders that are trading dollar against other currencies know that they're going to stop hiking rates as much, and then the other currencies are going to gain strength against the dollar, which means the Dixie's gone down. So I'm thinking that what we've seen happen is that the Dixie's starting to hover and pit uh, hover. Uh, starting to drop rather, and so Bitcoin is able to hover in midair rather than dropping all the way down to its support level that we would expect. It's a very bullish thing for Bitcoin because it means that even though we're seeing a lot of bearishness in the industry, a lot of that weather is going to pass, and then the uh, headwinds are starting to get weaker. So it's almost like this. Let me put it like this. <clears throat> there was this really massive, persistent, unstoppable headwind that was just stopping Bitcoin from moving, right? It started to let up, but at the very same time that it let up, this other just really short-term headwind came in that's really, really, really strong. It's stronger than the normal headwind we were facing, but it's shorter. The FUD from the FTX disaster will probably take three to six months to play out. After that, the main impact it will have is anybody that was invested in the platform, which is a lot of people, but still a, ultimately an insignificant portion of the industry. It's not going to call that alone is not going to hold down Bitcoin. It's mainly the FUD and uncertainty holding it down. And then also you have the regulatory scrutiny that's going to come. That could hold Bitcoin and crypto down. But it could also be a good thing because we do need clear regulation. That could end up being a win-win in the future. Uh, not a win-win. It could end up being a win-lose. Lose is in a lot of people lost money, but a win because regulation comes in and a lot of these um, international funds are able to step in. Nevertheless, this persistent, slightly weaker, maybe moderate strength headwind of the Fed hiking rates has started to trail off. Replacing it in the short term is this really strong but shorter-lived headwind. When both of those are leaving at the same time, all of a sudden, Bitcoin's going to be going a lot, able to move a lot faster. Think about it like that. It's, it's almost like you're playing tug-of-war. And you're like, pulling, 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 pulling. And then everybody on the other team just lets up and you just go flying because of all that force is built up. And there was resistance and now there's not. So in the next three months, you're going to see the Federal Reserve start to pivot uh, start to pivot rates. You're also probably going to see some more major bankruptcies that will drive Bitcoin further to the downside as contagion spreads. That's going to knock out more weak actors, ultimately making the industry, industry stronger and getting us closer to bedrock. And as the news of FTX starts to fall into the past in history, and Sam Bankman-Fried's hopefully in jail, and you got you know the executive team is being uh, investigated, and you've got uh, bankruptcy, fi uh, bankruptcy filings going through, and you've got hopefully people are having money returned to them, which that might take a decade if, if you have money on FTX. Don't count on getting it back anytime soon, unfortunately. I wish I could tell you something else, but that's just what we that's what we observe from Mt. Gox. People are still trying to get it back eight, nine years later. As all of those things start to come together, you have the effective federal funds rate plateauing and maybe even dropping towards the end of next year. You have the FTX news and disaster starting to look like it's uh, now moving into the history books. Uh, we're getting further away from the Luna disaster. We're getting uh, the mining industry is getting shaken up. A lot of bad, uh, poorly managed companies are getting reestablished. Uh, their miners are being sold off and being reestablished by stronger miners. They have learned lessons. You're going to start to see the industry strengthen and solidify. And over the next three to six months, I think you're really going to see that bottoming take place. The bottoming on the price may take place sooner. The concept of bottoming and the pathway, the on-ramp towards a major bull market in Bitcoin is currently being formed. And it started forming a week ago when Sam Bankman-Fried posted that tweet. His tweet was basically this. Let me show you on the chart where we are right now plotted over the last bull market, last bear market in crypto. Remember, guys, I've been through two bull markets, two bear markets now. This is my second bear market, a bull market, bear market cycles, about four years. Basically, where we were 
uh, before, what was it, November? I think it was November 8th. It was November 8th. It was Election Day that he posted that. Th this is pretty much where we were. On, um, on, <clears throat> you know what? It's actually four years ago exactly, so let's just draw it right there. There you go. We were pretty much right here when he posted his faithful, fateful tweet, that being Sam Bankman-Fried. And then him posting that tweet, FBF, uh, SBF posting the tweet, FTX going under, led to this downfall, pretty much. Again, we're seeing pretty much the exact same thing happen over on Bitcoin. A couple of differences, though. We were right here. We saw this fateful downfall. Bitcoin would drop 26% in four days. That's pretty much where we were. But after we dropped, we were able to drop so far that everybody was so confident. That there's no way Bitcoin's going more than 85% from all-time high. You know how much fundamental value is in here. And then it started moving a little bit. Then we saw a long squeeze and it kicked off a massive rally. Bitcoin went to $13,800. That, I believe, is something that you're going to see take place similar over the next six to eight months. I think that where we are right now is right here. And I remember this phase. I remember this. I remember this vividly because everybody thought it was the end times. Everybody thought Bitcoin was done. Everybody thought Bitcoin was going to zero. And then from that bottom, like a phoenix from the ashes, Bitcoin would rally 2,000% in two and a half years. If you've lost faith and hope in Bitcoin and crypto, I'm afraid that you need to recon... Not afraid. I'm excited to tell you that you need to reconsider that because Bitcoin's not dying, guys. Price action is going down. There's a big difference. Amazon lost 95% of its value one time. Still went on to be a trillion dollar company. Apple, similar story. So many of the greats have lost so much of their value. Cardano, before it went to 313 last year, it dropped at 98% at one point. And still ran, managed to rally because the fundamentals were there. The technicals aren't always going to be there, but the fundamentals were. And so we were able to be confident. So what does that mean for the space? Well, if we take a look back here at Bitcoin, I pretty much just want to give you one very simple drawing, and it's this. This is what transpired on Bitcoin. Bitcoin didn't go back to all-time high within a year, but it did go through a major rally, and this took about 200 days. We're talking over six months. If we just drag this and plot this over where Bitcoin is right now, just, you know, not trying to get an exact price target, not trying to do anything fancy, then, yeah, we could drop even further. We dropped 50% back then. Bitcoin has not dropped 50% yet. I'm not saying it will, but if it did, it would drop down to $10,500, which is an active price target of ours, because that would be 50% or 85% retrace from all-time high, which is what we've done the last two bear markets. From there, though, guys, right around this time, on into January, February, March, in this area, Fed pivots their rates. Contagion starts to end because everybody who's going to go bankrupt has gone bankrupt. You start to hopefully see some increased regulatory clarity and scrutiny. You're in a new year, which is going to make things a lot easier for a lot of companies that are behind on their taxes because the companies that uh, were going to go bankrupt from that have now gone bankrupt from that. You start getting people having tax returns so they're able to invest more in crypto. It's no longer the holiday season, meaning that people are not trying to invest in Christmas. They don't mind investing in the markets anymore. Now, that's a double-edged sword because we know that there's a lot of investment that comes in in quarter four, so it's not, as that, it's not that simple. But then you also see things like, hopefully, the conflict in Ukraine will be over in the next three months. All of these factors bring a perfect storm towards this area in the next three to six months. And I am looking at very closely where Bitcoin could have its bottoming. And I know it almost, it, it always seems like the market is three to six months from bottoming out. But ultimately, that's what it looks like right now. That really is what it looks like. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on that in the comment section down below. Because a lot of things that we're holding down Bitcoin are looking like they're starting to move on. And also don't forget, Bitcoin has now been in a bear market for over a year. It's been over a year since we hit all-time high. Bear markets typically last uh, from top to very bottom, about 14 to 18 months. That would put us bottoming sometime in quarter one of next year. So those are just some of my thoughts on it from a technical standpoint. As far as contagion, as I said in the title, the worst is absolutely yet to come. Yet to come. I think we're going to see, not absolutely, but very likely yet to come. I think you are going to see continued dropping, uh, continued drops on the price of Bitcoin. I think you are going to see lower lows on other assets. One thing, it might not happen on Ethereum, though, because just keep in mind, Ethereum, this is pretty encouraging. Ethereum had already dropped down here to $877. It has not done that just yet. So it's possible that Ethereum is already completely bottomed. ADA, I don't know if ADA is completely bottom. It could go down to 20 cents. Bitcoin, it could go down to 10 to 14,000. Maybe it doesn't, but maybe it does. I want you to be ready for that if it does happen. So let's kind of wrap this all up into a nice neat bow. What happens if Bitcoin does drop down to 14K? What happens if Ethereum does drop down into a $1,000 range? Cardano is down around 20 cents, etc. What happens if Kronos goes under? What happens if Crypto.com or something happens to Binance? Something happens to Binance, we're going to four figures on Bitcoin. I can 
very confident in that. If so, if Binance, if what happened to FTX happened to Binance, you're seeing an eight thousand dollar Bitcoin. I think Binance is okay. Hopefully. Here's what I want you to remember. When you're playing sports, and uh, and something goes wrong, what does the coach tell you to do? Does he tell you to go and spend a ton of time practicing that one little fancy thing you do? Or if you're, you know, a professional fighter, wrestler, does your coach or whoever tell you, go practice that one kick? No, they tell you to go back to basics. Go back to basics. That's what we're doing on the channel right now. We're back to basics. I'm shooting in a bedroom again. By the way, nothing's happened in the studio. We're actually doing some work on the studio right now. We're building a new set in the studio. So the studio is going great. But back to basics. I'm, I'm shooting on the same blue Yeti that I used to shoot on three years ago when I shot when I had the company in my in my bedroom. Same lighting gear, actually. Same camera and lens. We're back to basics. We're brushing up on the basics. Sam Bankman Fried needed to brush up on the basics. What are the basics? Don't invest more than you're willing to lose. Ensure that you have enough liquidity that you're not going to get liquidated by making sure that you can take all your money and, and all of your investment in the backyard and burn it. Have a long runway if you do have a runway at all. Make sure that you're diversified, not over diversified, but somewhat diversified. Make sure that all of your eggs aren't in one basket. If they're in one basket, you better make sure it's a good one. Make sure you're doing your own research. Make sure you're thinking for yourself. Make sure you're, I shouldn't even have to say this, but make sure you're maintaining your moral integrity. These are things that you need to remember. And this is a season right now for two things. One, go back to basics, brush up on your charting skills, brush up on your technical analysis, brush up on reading indicators, brush up on your research in the way that you do research. Reanalyze the investment portfolio that you have because this may be the best time to invest in Bitcoin that you will ever get again. Because I, after Bitcoin goes into its next bull market, I'd be very surprised if you ever saw a $16,000, $17,000 Bitcoin again. You're probably going to go to at least $100K in the next bull market, maybe dropping down to forty or fifty dollars during the next bear market. I don't think you'll ever see these lows again. We could see a low of forty or fifty thousand on Bitcoin, but I don't think you'll ever see seventeen again after we take off from here. I'm talking in the next several years. Um, so first of all, go back to basics. Second of all, remember the why that you're in Bitcoin and crypto. Let me ask you a question: When when Mt. Gox went under, when BitConnect went under, when Luna went under, when FTX went under. Did anything fundamentally change about the problem that Bitcoin was created to solve? No. In fact, every time something terrible happens in the industry, and people outside the industry don't understand this because they lump FTX in with Bitcoin, and it's, a, it's a bad idea because it's not accurate. Bitcoin was designed to incentivize self-custody. It was designed to incentivize financial sovereignty. That's not the word that was used, but that's what it is. It was designed to incentivize us to have power and control over our own money. And if there is a part of it that we don't personally have control over, that is in a trustless third party that is uh, that you don't have to trust, like the code of blockchain, like the code of Bitcoin, rather. The why of Bitcoin has never been stronger. If anything, every single time an exchange goes under or a bad actor goes bankrupt, the reason behind Bitcoin is solidified. You need sound money that you can trust that is uncomp uncompromisable unhackable. As I talked about in the Michael Saylor interview I did six, eight months ago, go watch that if you haven't. Bitcoin is the first thermodynamically sound superconducting currency ever created in the history of mankind. And essentially what that means is it's totally lossless. You can send it anywhere on the planet in any amount. And thermodynamically sound basically means from a physics standpoint that you lose basically none of it. You don't lose it to inflation. You barely lose it to fees. You, If you use it correctly and don't make a mistake, it's not user error, crypto.com, then you don't lose it to sending it to the wrong transaction. It's not going to get hacked. It's not going to get stolen from you if you're doing your due diligence. And it is super conducting in that you can send it anywhere almost instantaneously with no guards, no guardrails. Now, of course, there's accountability, but you can do whatever you want with it. Bitcoin is the first example of that in the history of mankind. It has never existed before, ever. We have never as a human race had a currency that was not able to be manipulated by someone. Bitcoin can't be manipulated. Its price can be manipulated. The currency itself cannot. You can't manipulate the supply. You can manipulate the price all you want. Nobody can manipulate a market into not existing anymore like Bitcoin because it's a, it's, it's a virus. It's everywhere. Good luck ever destroying Bitcoin. Bitcoin, so long as we have the internet, and even if we don't have the internet, even just having computers, because you could actually transact Bitcoin without the internet. So long as we have computers, Bitcoin will be around. And it will continue to help solve a problem that humans have faced for millennia 
of not being able to trust your currency won't be worth less 10 years from now than it is now. Not being able to trust that a central government will come in and double the supply in five years, undermining your value and leaving your family without food. Bitcoin solves that problem. And that's why it's a $100 trillion value proposition, because that is something that until today was ne until 13 years ago was never able to be solved. And Bitcoin will never disappear because it solves that problem. What of what I just said does FTX going under change? Nada. If anything, it just proves the reason why we need something like Bitcoin. But just remember, guys, as we're building this industry, we don't want to build traditional finance. The reason that Bitcoin was needed in the first place was to get us away from a lot of the nonsense that led to the reasoning that Bitcoin was created in the first place. Bitcoin was not created in response to the 2008 financial crisis. It just The timeline doesn't make sense. But it's convenient that it came out right then because a lot of the same things that happened during the 2008 financial crisis of banks being over leveraged and massive shorting and poor central planning of government of economies just happened in FTX, just happened in the crypto space. It shouldn't be happening, but it is. Bitcoin was not affected. Bitcoin is like the freaking laws of physics, guys. Good luck changing it. It's all of these things built on top of it. It is the bedrock. We're part of the bedrock, but it's the real bedrock that we build our bedrock on top of. We have to understand the why behind Bitcoin. We have a whole series on why Bitcoin here on the channel if you want to go back and watch that. Anyway. <laughs> Anywho, really appreciate you guys. Uh, really appreciate you guys tuning in. FTX isn't the problem, just adding to it. Yeah, I mean, FTX was a problem, but it wasn't the core of the problem. Rick Ellingson donated $2. When will you return to ATB? I'm not sure. I would like to go on around the blockchain at some point. I was invited. Um, so hoping that I will be able to go back on there at some point, uh, right now with me being sick, my wife being sick, I was having a very difficult pregnancy. It's kind of hard because, uh, you know, I have a two year old, I have a, I'm sick right now. My wife is, she like pregnancy hits her hard guys. If you don't know, we're uh, 18 weeks pregnant with a baby dog, with a baby girl tomorrow. So it's pretty difficult on her when I'm not uh, there to help with, with Malachi, our son. But anyway, Jeff said a few times he expects Cardano to hit $10 in the next few years. I do think you'll see a $10 Cardano. Maybe 10 years from now, but I do think you'll see it. Taylor is down $3 million, including loans. Everybody's down right now, guys. Fair market. <laughs> That's how it goes. Have you not got a watch sponsor anymore? Still got Vincero here. They're not a, they're not an active sponsor of the channel, but they did give me a few free watches, which is cool. Should I put everything on a ledge, in your opinion? I, I think you mean ledger, yeah. Yeah, I think it would be good to put it on a ledger or some kind of uh, cold wallet. Oh, the channel and your son share the same birthday. That's cool. Charts can't fix this issue. No, charts are very important, but yeah, it's more than just charts. Jeb talking to himself is funny. He asks questions and answers them with no one else around. Yeah, I know. I have become a professional talker to myself. That's weird. You're crazy. No, I know. I'm sorry. I need to change. That was weird. I had to. I had to. I, like, have commentary in my head running because I've been doing commentary on YouTube for five years. So, like, I'll be doing something. I'm, like, commentating. It's, it's probably think I'm nuts. <clears throat> no Rolex as of yet. Well, we're investing in, uh, we're investing a lot in Bitcoin and crypto right now and also in, in, uh, <clears throat> in a few other areas. <laughs> Jeb, when are you adding a preaching channel? I don't know. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Congratulations on the baby. Rolex is for attention seekers. I mean... Yeah, Rolex is also one of the most, one of the best investments. It's funny, um, I, my uncle and aunt-in-law and their four kids are staying with us right now. And my uncle-in-law, Sarah's uncle, he is one of like 300 Rolex repair people in the entire country. And so he's been telling me a lot about Rolexes. Rap battle, Jeb versus Jeb. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I told you guys, Party in Backyard wanted me to make a, video, a song with him, and I still need to upload that. Drop a one in chat if you want me to upload that rap that you guys saw. Um, hire me, Jeb. I'll bring the spirits up in the office. Okay. Well, we might. I am probably going to be considering a uh, a uh, editor at some point in the future. I'm gonna want someone with a lot of experience, though. I'm not saying you don't have that. I'm just saying I, I want to make sure that we have somebody with a lot of a lot of experience because we're probably going to be upgrading to cinema camera equipment at some point in the future. That would be the hope, anyway. 
what does the Bible say about crypto? Well, the Bible doesn't talk about crypto because crypto didn't exist yet, but it does talk, now the Bible does talk about a lot of things that hadn't happened yet. It's called prophecy and there's a lot of it in there. But it does talk a lot about money. It talks about in Proverbs, uh, the debtor is the slave to the debt holder. And that's one thing to keep in mind. And <laughs> Sam Bankman fried I mean, you were a good example of that. You were holding a lot of people's debt and people had their money with him and he was holding the debt. And then the debtors, which are the people that had money on exchange, they lost because they were subservient to him with their money. So, you know, there's a lot of things that it talks about. A whole lot of things. Hey, Jeb, what's your channel email? You can shoot us an email, supportcryptojeb.com. A fool and his money will soon part. That is also a quote from, I believe, Proverbs. Let's see. I tried to sell a watch recently and they laughed at me and said, who wears watches anymore? I love watches. I'm wearing a Vincero Kronos S right now. Love this watch. They gave this to me for free because we were sponsoring them for a while. The wrap was incredible, plus one. Yeah, you guys want that apparently, so I probably will update that, up, uh, upload that. Would you sell physical gold for BTC? I haven't looked at the gold chart recently, so I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I don't hold any gold. You know what I mean? I guess gold, I just think Bitcoin's going to appreciate a lot more than gold is in the next 50 years. I don't know why I would invest in it. Is Sol purely a victim? Uh, no, but they are they are definitely a victim of what's going on here. It's not all their fault what happened. Jeb, what investments other than crypto would you have slash recommend? Well, we're looking to build a real estate portfolio starting next year. We're going to try to buy a house or two a year and build a rental portfolio. So if we do that, then I will keep you guys up to deep up to up to deep up to date on that. Uh, not we'll probably invest. We'll probably always have more in crypto than real estate. Maybe not. I mean, we'll see. But by way, I mean my wife and I. Um, but I would like to build some passive income from that. And so our plan is I kind of break down kind of for you what our plan with real estate is. My real estate agent gave me this idea. It's a really good idea. You buy a house a year and then you take absolutely no profit out of them and you just buy them on a loan, put 20, 40% down. Uh, you can fix them up to increase the property value <clears throat> and your net worth. And then you take all of the rental income, dump any extra penny that doesn't need to go into a savings account for repairs. And, uh, and, and after you pay a property manager, if you do, dump all of that right back into the principal of the property. Then you buy another house the next year, take all of its money and dump it into the principal of the first property. By the time you buy the fourth property, the first house ought to be paid off in four years or so. Then you take all of its revenue because it's not paying a mortgage anymore, dump that into the second property. And then you have the first property, the third property, the fourth and the fifth. You're on year six now, dumping into the second. Then you have two paid off houses, use all those into the third. Within 10 years, you have 10 houses that are paid off. And let's say the houses are $100,000 a piece. You have a million dollar portfolio, million dollar portfolio, bring in 10% a year. That's $100,000 a year in 10 years from investing $20,000 a year into properties buying at $20,000, uh, 20% down payment. So that's not, that's not the exact formula. It's not that simple. I understand that, but uh, that's kind of the idea. So that's, that's kind of what we're thinking about doing is getting into real estate, trying to buy a property a year, build a real estate portfolio, just as a backup, because you never know what's going to happen. It's good to be diversified. Until tenants lose jobs. It's true, but the thing is, people always need a place to live. People don't always need to, you know, buy a lot of things, like go to the movies. They always got to live somewhere. It's one of the reasons I love real estate, and I've always wanted to get into it. O'Leary loves watches. I look at them differently now ever since that interview on your channel. Yeah, they seem like good investments. I've never invested in them myself, but I am, I am tempted. 100K a piece. Haha, <laughs> spoken like a true southerner. It's hard to find a $100,000 home down here, but that was just for the example. Bible also talks about one economic system. You can't buy or sell unless you take in the mark. Uh, how is that possible without something digital? I'm not going to get into it because it's a long story and beyond the scope of this stream. As far as my eschatolo eschatological understanding of the book of Revelation is, I don't believe the one world currency start comes into place until halfway through tribulation. And believe me, if tribulation was going on, you would know it. So I don't. So people have asked me before, is Bitcoin the one world currency? From my understanding of Revelation, I don't think it's possible because I, it seems to me from the reading of Revelation, there's a lot of different interpretations, that the one world currency does not get implemented until three and a half years into tribulation, which is a seven year period towards the end of the, towards the, end of the world for the coming of Christ. So I don't think that's even possible. <laughs> Anyway, guys, I really appreciate all of you tuning in. We are going to go ahead and wrap it up. If you did enjoy today's stream, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and tune in tomorrow for another stream where we're going to bring you the latest in Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and technical Bitcoin and cryptocurrency technical on-chain and fundamental analysis so that you guys can be part of the bedrock and achieve hashtag Fensoft. Really appreciate all of you guys tuning in and the super chats. Before I go, though, guys, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always, and I will see you guys in the next video.
Peace. Mr. Biden. Oh, I got a real good feeling.